Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for Digital Transformation and the Catholic Church, bringing truth and hope in the modern age. This is part one, a collaboration between the Archdiocese of Detroit and the Diocese of Arlington, Virginia. My name is Billy Atwell. I'm the Chief Communications Officer for the Diocese of Arlington. In just the last 15 years or so, digital and social media have transformed virtually every aspect of business, industry, the news media, personal communication, the maintenance of relationships, and more. But they've also transformed the way the Catholic Church, both as an institution and as a body of the faithful, communicates and evangelizes. From the smallest mission parish to the Vatican and Rome, digital and social media are used to accomplish what traditional communication tools cannot and to bridge the gap between those actively engaged in the work of the church and those who are disconnected or have fallen away. To discuss and explore these critical issues, I have with me today two bishops who have recently authored pastoral letters on the use of digital and social media. Archbishop Alan Vigdron of Detroit, who authored The Beauty of Truth, a pastoral note on communicating love and truth in the digital age, and Bishop Michael Burbage of Arlington, Virginia, in tongues all can hear, communicating the hope of Christ in times of trial. Thank uh, to both of you, Your Excellencies, for being with us today. Let's begin our conversation by talking about how the use of media has changed just in your lifetimes. Archbishop Vigneron, when you think about how church communications have changed since your own childhood and since the time you began serving as a young priest, what comes to mind? What I first think about is the change in devices, uh, what we use for our, our communication. When I was a young priest, uh, it was the bulletin and it was uh, the telephone. And now uh, we have uh, these electronic means that uh, permit uh, almost instantaneous communication uh, in a, a, such a wide range of audiences. Uh, we can be in touch with uh, uh, people on the other side of the globe instantly. It, it's really quite remarkable the potential we have to be in touch with people. Bishop Burbage, what comes to mind for you when you think about church communications and how it's changed during your lifetime? Very much the same as Archbishop uh, Vigneron uh, stated. And even today, what we're doing here is, is just an example. Isn't this wonderful that uh, via Zoom, uh, to Arch, uh, the Archdiocese of Detroit, the Diocese of Arlington, with our own communications team, could be doing something uh, like this uh, in uh, communicating and speaking with the faithful. And uh, as the Archbishop said, while the parish bulletin seems to remain a strong force of communication, everyone still seems to read that, uh, there are just so many ways uh, to communicate in a timely manner and to reach various audiences. And I think it's part of the challenge that we continue to receive, learn as a church is, you know, who is it we're trying to reach and what is the best venue, what is the best tool uh, to utilize? So there's so much uh, available to us and uh, thank God, fortunately, the church is uh, encouraged by our Holy Father, John Paul II and Pope Benedict and Pope Francis. Uh, we're continuing to use every appropriate tool possible uh, to evangelize, to share the joy, the truth of the gospel. Bishop right. Burbage, uh, following up with you, you've served as a bishop or an auxiliary bishop in three different dioceses, Philadelphia, Raleigh, and Arlington, very different places. Is there a moment that stands out for you when you began to realize the technological shift that was directly impacting the church and the way we function? I, I don't think of any uh, particular moment in, in either diocese, any of the three dioceses I served, but you know they were at different times, they were different years. And the one thing you would notice is that as the years would advance, so would the tools. So you could never stand still uh, in the work of communication and evangelization, you had to, um, you know, keep up with what uh, was most available to the people, what was being used the most. So to think what you were doing in 2002, you could do in 2006 or 2016 uh, would just not be the case. You had to evolve with the communication in order to stay uh, in contact and relevant, I think. Archbishop Vigneron, you, you searched the church in many different capacities as well. As an academic dean, you've been a president and rector of Sacred Heart Seminary. You served at uh, the Vatican in the Secretariat of State. So you've seen different 
angles of the church with regard to communications. Is there a moment that stands out for you when you realize a significant change in the church's need for and use of technology? I suppose, Billy, the uh, change that most stands out in my mind is uh, when we no longer needed a TV studio in order to broadcast uh, uh, messages to s the sort of thing we're doing today. Uh, we do uh, broadcasts for all the priests, for example, leaders in the diocese, and uh, there's a laptop and a, a little handheld computer, and it's as effective as uh, these clunky TV uh, cameras used to be. So in my mind, that's uh, symbolic of uh, the change that's come about from uh, the advance in technology. Very good. As you're both well aware, it has become harder for the church to have a voice in the public square, in part because of the sexual abuse crisis and an overall secularization of, of society. It has certainly had an effect on government and legislatures when it comes to securing religious liberty, uh, but is perhaps most notable in the way the news media cover the church. Uh, this coverage has enormous consequence for what is said about the church on social and digital media platforms. Archbishop Vigneron, going back to you, as a bishop, I'm sure you've noticed this as well. As a pastor, what concerns you most about this reality? I think uh, one of the things that's the, a great challenge for us is uh, the, the milieu in which we try to communicate. Uh, there's a tremendous polarization. Everybody recognizes it. Uh, and this is creating tension, even contentious uh, atmosphere. And so it's very hard to within this milieu uh, to uh, offer the good news, to present our message in such a way uh, that, uh, that you get a hearing and you don't get caught up in uh, the push and pull, the antagonisms that uh, very much are part of the culture. I think that's one thing that strikes me as, as very important right now. Very good. Bishop Burbage, any, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I agree with the Archbishop. And, and the fact that we realize, Billy, some of the um, obstacles and challenges that you mentioned are, are very real. And sometimes that the, the coverage that we receive as, as a, um, a church is not always accurate, uh, is not always um, as, as respectful as we would hope, but we just cannot sit back and uh, complain or, or just uh, be paralyzed by it. Uh, we take the initiative to be proactive and to use the means that are available to us to tell our own story, to tell the good news, to get ahead of, of the story. Uh, so um, we, we have to realize that, that yes, there's going to be obstacles, uh, there's going to be challenges, but we have the tools and means to be a voice in the public arena, uh, which is our sacred duty and our sacred obligation, and we better be prepared uh, to use every resource possible uh, rather than allowing uh, the faithful only to hear one perspective or one side. We have to be, be the voice, our own voice. I was going to pick up on what Bishop Burbage has said. Uh, I think the fact that we can present our message with a certain calmness, a serenity, a peace, is precisely uh, part of the good news. It's an alternative that I think for most people is very attractive. Uh, to offer a message that uh, transcends the polarization and uh, brings people together. I think this is uh, a great blessing that we have and we can use the media uh, precisely to do this. I would, I would agree with that, Billy, too, that uh, you know, sometimes uh, as a church, uh, as Archbishop said, what is attractive is how the church is, is, is the face, is the compassion, is the, the consolation of Christ to so many people. And I think in the past, uh, you know, we've hesitated uh, to tell the good news or, 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 the, or, or the good stories because the reason we do the works of charity and the works of mercy is for, of course, God's glory and honor and in service to other people. So we're, we're humble uh, as a church as we should be, but at the same time, as Archbishop said, what is attractive to people is how our faith is, is leading uh, to action, to doing good works, to helping so many people. 
And so we can hesitate to tell the good stories of, of the work of Catholic Charities and Catholic Education and so many other ministries that support and help people, not just Catholics, but people in our community. And that, that will touch hearts. So we, we as in, in our work communication evangelization, it's not just to, uh, we always say, yes, we inform, uh, yes, we educate, uh, but we also must inspire and nothing inspires more than telling the stories of who we are and how the church is so present in the lives of so many people, especially in time of challenge and crisis. Absolutely. Thank you both for those, those insights. That's very good. When we canvass the various major media outlets, many of them have a perspective that's at odds with what we know to be true as Catholics. Communications directors for dioceses around the country, I know, get media requests where it seems that the story's already been written, the agenda is there, and the outcome of the stories often shapes the conversation about a given topic, and obviously that makes its way into social and digital media. Archbishop Vigneron, uh, you outlined in your pastoral letter five warning signs for problematic use of media and communications. Can you give us a bird's eye view of what those are and why you felt it was important to identify them in your pastoral letter? I think it's important to identify these uh, five signs because we all have the obligation of living lives of virtue. Uh, and one of the most important virtues in the life of a disciple is to be an agent of truth, uh, to uh, speak truth to others and to uh, sift through what we hear and make sure that it is true. And so what I offered with these five touchstones, these five signs, is uh, some pastoral advice about how to use the media. And I think it also applies for people who uh, uh, produce the media as well. First of all, a very simple one, and I borrowed it from St. Ignatius Loyola, uh, if uh, what's presented is contrary to what people know to be the teaching of the church, then it's not true. Uh, we know that uh, we have a reliable uh, touchstone of the truth in the, uh, the teaching of the Holy Father, the bishops, uh, it's in the catechism. If, it's, uh, if what's presented in the media contradicts that, well, it's not true. Another important uh, touchstone is uh, to beware of unsubstantiated claims. Uh, it's very possible today with uh, easy access to media for people to make outlandish claims. People need to be critical and ask, what's the evidence for the claim that people make? A third one is to be careful about the way people manipulate facts. Uh, the facts presented uh, might be accurate, but how are they put together and, and what's the kind of conclusion that people uh, are led to? Uh, does, it, does the argument stand up? A fourth point is ad hominem arguments, that uh, arguments that really don't go after uh, uh, the point that's being made, but go after the person who's uh, making the point. Uh, that's a sign that uh, you're on shaky ground. And ultimately, uh, is what's presented divisive? Does it set us against one another? Now, this is not to say that we can't have disagreements, but these disagreements have to be uh, uh, tempered with charity and, and, and understanding one for another. Uh, the apostle says, say only the good things men need to hear. Uh, we are, we're accountable to God for the virtuous way that we use media, for, for being excellent uh, in using media to get to the truth. I think that's why it's important. Bishop Burbage, you point out many of the same points in your pastoral letter and your ministry in general, particularly the last point about unity. But there's also no getting around the fact that social media can be used for good and they're tools that are here to stay, so we need to learn to work with them. In your pastoral letter, you write, quote, early in the digital revolution, the church recognized that special effort would be necessary by all her members to use these tools effectively and wisely so that true and accurate information would not get lost in a sea of misinformation and opinion. Again, very closely matching up with what Archbishop Vigneron has compared there. Do you think the church has been effective in using these tools to combat misinformation? Yes, I think in many ways we have used the uh, tools that, that we need to, again, to be that voice. Uh, 
And I think the, the warning signs that Archbishop Vigneron uh, mentioned in his pastoral letter, uh, they speak to all of us, uh, you know, not just to the media in general, uh, to the media um, in, in the public arena, to Catholic media, uh, to individuals who have their own, own platforms. Uh, we all have the obligation to be aware of the, those warning signs and, and to a- avoid them. And I think we should, as a church, and we try to do this, uh, when media, uh, whether it be national media, Catholic media, are, are, are doing their job well to, to thank them and, and to encourage them, uh, to respectfully challenge them when they're not, when uh, some of those warning signs mentioned are, are, are ignored. And, and I think that we, as a church, uh, as a diocese, uh, as individuals, we need to set the example. And so I think that we communicate the truth, um, we engage with others, even those who, who disagree with us, uh, even those who say things opposite than what is uh, uh, very, very dear to us as far as our beliefs and convictions, morals, in, in a respectful way. Um, and and we cannot fall into the same trap of uh, of you know uh, adopting a tone that is contrary uh, to what it means to be a Christian, to be a follower of Christ, and that goes for all of us, and and, and even to the faithful on their own individual platforms. We have to uh, be a strong voice. We don't water down what we think and what we believe and what we know to be true. Uh, but we do so in, in a respectful manner and, and try to engage others uh, with that disposition. Very good points there. Uh, one maxim that we've known to be true before the invention of the printing press is that words matter. Our parents tell us this when we're kids, right? What we say and how we say it makes a big difference in the lives of, of those around us. Uh, both of you note in your pastoral letters that sadly many people kind of transform themselves on social media and strip away much of the, the charity and care that they would offer in person. They say things on a keyboard or a smartphone that they would never say to someone's face. As Catholics, how can we avoid or respond to this trapping of social media, Bishop Burbage? Well, again, I think just following um, the example of, of Christ himself, the, the greatest communicator and the way he spoke to people, the way he he treated people, and uh, and to understand the uh, and acknowledge the the harm uh, when that is not followed. I was just uh, speaking with some Catholic educators uh, in our high schools uh, recently, and we know that for many reasons, especially in light of the challenges of the uh, pandemic and and everything that comes with that, but for other reasons, young people are experiencing. Uh, distress and anxiety uh, in, in their lives. And it was interesting for me to hear that uh, from the Catholic educators that one of the uh, factors that is, is a cause of great stress in the lives of young people is the fear, is the fear of what might be said about them on social media or might, what might be shared on social media that can do great damage uh, to their self-confidence and to their self-image, and how it really has emotionally, uh, you know, hurt and negatively impacted the lives of young people. But I am sure that is true for all people. So as you said, Billy, I think you know words do matter, and uh, you know uh, to. To repeat what Archbishop said, you know, we should say uh, the, the, only the good things that people need to hear. Uh, but to think that, you know, we can say something casually and passively uh, that is somewhat hurtful or disrespectful and involves another people without causing great harm in, in the lives of others, that, that's just naive. So we, we have to uh, recognize the impact of how we use our social media uh, what it is we say and how we speak to one another. Archbishop Vigneron, I know you're, you're close to your faithful, and I'm sure you hear some of these things. What, what are your thoughts? You know, I, uh, when Bishop Burbage was speaking, uh, I came, what came to my mind was a little rhyme that I used to hear when I was in grade school. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. And uh, as I grow older, I realize that that's not true, that names do hurt. Uh, that's very important 
speech is one of the most important uh, services we can give to one another. It's the way we share the world, we share one another. And, and I think it's, a, for my mind, it's a call to, to holiness that uh, speech uh, is an act that should be uh, enlivened, made alive by, by love, by charity. And even if I don't see the person I'm in contact with, uh, I am in contact with that person. That's why it's called social media. And I owe the people with whom I'm in contact uh, love. Uh, the service. It's a service that I offer. I, I think that's very, very important. What the bishop said about creating an atmosphere of fear, uh, tension, uh, that's a terrible disservice to my neighbor. Uh, we, we wouldn't do it in so many other situations. Uh, we wouldn't treat people that way. And uh, the anonymity of uh, digital media shouldn't uh, be uh, a catalyst or uh, lead us into a situation where, in fact, uh, we are disrespectful of, of one another and not attentive to uh, how we can serve one another. I think this is a great example of what uh, the, the members of the church, uh, Christ's disciples, can give to the world is uh, this light of, of how it is possible to use uh, social media with love. Thank you for that. For our last topic, I want to discuss the impact of COVID-19 on the church and digital communications in general. For many dioceses, as public celebrations of the mass were suspended for a time, and even now, depending on the state, there are still restrictions in place that are making the job of our priests and, and the life of our faithful very difficult. Uh, Archbishop Vigneron, when you think back over this time period, what stands out to you and what changes in the church that were initially prompted by the pandemic, do you think are here to stay? What stands out to me, Billy, uh, is very much the creativity of my pastors and their teams to meet the challenge of uh, uh, lockdown and uh, in, uh, the uh, situation where people weren't able to come to church. Uh, even today, uh, we say to people who uh, whose health doesn't permit them to come to church, uh, use social media. And my pastors and their teams were really attentive and able to use uh, social media, uh, webcast, uh, in order to keep people connected. And your second part, uh, the second point you made was what's going to uh, continue. I think we are not going to go back and we're going to continue to uh, maximize our use of these tools in order to uh, help people be connected. Uh, Bishop Burbage, the same question to you. I, I know a number of the, the pastors in your diocese uh, use social media in very creative ways, especially during the lockdown. But what are some of the long term impacts of COVID on communications and media in the Catholic Church from your perspective? Yeah, Billy, like the uh, Archbishop and I'm sure our brother bishops uh, from around the country, we are so proud uh, of the way our priests uh, in such a timely manner uh, when the COVID situation impacted us uh, stayed connected, found creative and new ways to stay connected pastorally and spiritually uh, to their people. And what was really unique about that uh, was the fact that uh, the faithful were so uh, uplifted that uh, they were able to, during those difficult times, uh, especially live stream, uh, view the Mass via live stream and, and make a spiritual communion. But it was their pastor, it, it was their priests. You know, uh, most of the faithful had opportunities in, in national ways to to do the same, but all of a sudden, it was the priest uh, who they saw every week or the priest who visited the homebound that they were staying connected with uh, throughout this crisis via uh, the social media. So that that bond was strengthened in, in, in so many ways, and it reflected the pastoral love and concern and care our priests had uh, for the faithful. And I think throughout that process, we have learned um, some some important uh, lessons that uh, we should not ignore that uh, the continued use of social media can be of great help 
um, you know, I think, for example, practical uh, situations where maybe grandparents in, in other states cannot uh, attend the confirmation of their grandchildren. Well, one is live stream. Uh, there's a there is a connection. There there's a presence of it. Uh, same for for other celebrations within the mass. Um, of course, that comes with the challenge uh, that, that we always are reminding uh, our faithful that uh, nothing can replace active and full participation, especially at Mass and the reception of the body and blood of Christ, for those who are physically and emotionally able uh, to do so. Uh, but I think the, the use of uh, social media, um, not just for live streaming Mass, but uh, for uh, Bible studies, uh, for videos, uh, teaching the faith. Uh, our priests were so creative, and I, I see it continuing, and that's very uplifting. Very good. I appreciate that. Uh, before we close out, Bishop Burbage, are there any final thoughts that you would want to share with those who are watching? Well, well to, um, to both uh, the communications team here in uh, Arlington and the Archdiocese of Detroit, thanks so much for allowing Archbishop Vigneron and I to have uh, such a discussion using, using technology, uh, using the tools of the day. And um, I would just ask, uh, you know, if I could repeat just if a final message to the faithful is to, to know that as a disciple of Christ, uh, you are to uh, evangelize. You are to, to spread the good news. And many of you uh, have that opportunity to do so with your own social media uh, platforms. But use it, as we've been saying throughout this segment, use it always for the glory of God. Uh, use it uh, in service uh, to others and always uh, with a, a respectful tone conveying that the love that we have for one another as members of God's family, as brothers and sisters in Christ. Archbishop Vigneron, any final thoughts from you? I'd give a big amen to Bishop Burbage. Uh, he said it very well. Uh, I do, just to underscore the point that he talked about our own social media, uh, for uh, all the faithful, how they're ever connected on uh, any, you know, Twitter, Facebook, uh, uh, and I know those are the ones that us old people use, I'm, I'm aware of that. But whatever uh, is the medium that people use, uh, to go at it with an apostolic heart, that's what I think the bishop was talking about, uh, to begin, or at least some point in the conversation say, how can I build up uh, the faith and the hope, uh, uh, the love of the person I'm connecting with, uh, uh, everybody can do that. Uh, everybody can have a missionary heart and bring that missionary heart uh, to ever, every time we pick up our, our cell phone. Again, I want to thank you both for your contributions here, and thank you for those who are, are watching. Clearly, you're interested in this topic, and we hope that this makes a positive impact for you and for your families. Uh, to check out the pastoral letters from Archbishop uh, Vigneron, as well as from Bishop Burbage, go to unleashthegospel.org or arlingtondiocese.org. And make sure you watch part two, where media and communications professionals uh, will be talking more about this topic, reflecting on some of the things each bishop has said, and also offering their own uh, thoughts and reflections from their experience in this field. Thank you, and God bless.